Hello, I'm the BIOS chemist and I've got an experiment. I'm combing through the entire PS1 catalog, trying to find the classics, the flops, and everything in between. Game number two is Ape Escape. Stay tuned to the end of the video to see what hidden gem is going to be game number three. First, we start where all games start. The cover art. 30 seconds, go. It's scary. These primates don't really look like they do in the game. These ones are oddly more realistic with creepily human eyes. They do at least convey the crazy personality of your main enemies in the game. Spike is way off in the background, hard to see, which is a shame because he has a nice design. The font for the title is decent, eye-catching enough, and it fits the tone, but I can't look at it for more than 5 seconds without feeling sick because of the insane motion blur that's going on. Phew! That was close! How does it compare to the Japanese cover? Eh, it's bad, but in a different way. Way too clustered. Anyway, Ape Escape proper. The first thing you see when you start the game is this screen. You need a fancy DualShock controller in order to play this game. This controller was Sony's answer to Nintendo's successful N64 analog controller. It's hard to imagine playing 3D games without this now basic feature, but for years that's how people had to play PlayStation games. In a way, Ape Escape is one of the most effective tech demos ever conceived, demonstrating just how much can be done with these nifty joysticks. Every item in this game requires use of the analog sticks in a different way. These items are a blast to play with and essential for accomplishing your goal, capturing the apes. So, there's this evil and wicked smart ape named Spectre. Professor created a time machine and Spectre frees a bunch of apes and takes control of the time machine, sending those monkeys back throughout time. Now your character Spike has to go back to the past and capture these primates. The premise is great for a 3D platformer. Have your main collectible be able to fight back. Not only do you have to solve puzzles and find them, you also need to work hard to capture those boogers. These apes are great and the best part of the entire franchise. They're funny and full of personality, with each one given a name, short bio, and stats. You can even read biographies of each ape after you catch them. It adds a ton of character and really incentivizes you to catch them all. Other than the apes though, the other enemies are pretty generic. Their designs are basic, attack patterns basic, they don't really detract from the game really, but they're lackluster. It would have been better if some of the bosses in this game were like bigger and stronger apes, something that they actually do end up doing later on in the series. Another thing I have to criticize is that while the premise is centered around how an evil wicked smart monkey hijacked a time machine, it really doesn't feel like you go back to the past for really the first half of the game. Settings are rather generic, just jungle, water, ice settings to start that don't really take full advantage of the time machine up until you get to the feudal Japan part. Things start to get more interesting from there, ending the game in the present and going up to outer space. Still, I wish that theme was a bit more cohesive. Going back to the tools, Ape Escape feels very Zelda-like where a lot of the puzzles are based around the tools you acquire throughout the adventure. Each of these are honestly pretty unique with your main tool being the net used to capture your hairy adversaries. Gadgets like the Super Hoop and the Skyflyer are extremely fun because they increase your platform ability meaning that you can use them constantly throughout the game to increase Spike's agility and dexterity. Since each of the tools requires use of the analog sticks, neither stick is mapped to controlling the camera. Instead, you'll be continuously pressing L1 to readjust the camera. For the most part, the game handles it well, but every once in a while you do get an issue. I'm going for it. Throughout the game, you'll get these special levels where Spike has to race his friend Jake, whose Spectre is mind-controlling. These are pretty easy platforming focus levels, but they do help break up the pace of the game a bit. Speaking of breaking up the game, there are also three unlockable mini-games that you can earn by gathering the game's secondary collectible, Spectre Coins, that can be found in each level. There's a skiing mini-game, a boxing mini-game, and a space shooter mini-game. They're honestly pretty fleshed out and decently fun, another good incentive for collecting everything the game has to offer. So anyway, to get to the end credits of Ape Escape, all we have to do is rescue the professor and the girl and that guy Jake and then finally fight Spectre. The maniacal monkey escapes, but we see everyone happy and safe once again. The professor does say that we should go back and capture all the monkeys so that Spike can find and capture Spectre, but honestly I'm Ape Escaped out at this point and I don't feel like 100% of the game, sorry. You're not taking me anywhere! I'll never go back! I'm never going back to that rotten place! You listen, and you listen good. I will return, and when I do, I'll destroy you and the world as you know it. So you better be ready, because next time, I won't fail. 
Wait! Spectre! Yes! Alright, we've reached the credits. Now it's time to learn about one of the game's creators. Today I've picked Soichi Tarada, Ape Escape's composer. You've got to give this guy credit where it's due. He nailed this soundtrack. The tunes are all upbeat, electronic house stuff that would really fit in at a dance club. Toronto would work on the other Ape Escape games that would follow this one and a few games here and there, but other than that, he really hasn't worked too much in the video game industry. According to his Wikipedia, he's been consistently releasing albums, with his most recent one being in 2022. I'm feeling... A 10. So, Ape Escape is a fun time, and I would definitely recommend it to fans of 3D platformers. While not perfect, it certainly feels different from others in its genre. Alright, this is the part where I need your help, everybody. We have in the comments below a link to a straw poll where you can vote for three randomly selected games. These three were Army Men, Green Rogue, Superstar Dance Club, Number One Hits, FIFA Soccer 97. Or, if you don't like any of those, you can vote random, or pick another random game. Game number three is going to be a hidden gem close to my heart called Speed Punk. Yes! <laughs> yes! See you then. Thank you very much, everybody.